First, I'd like to say thank you to ADB for inviting me to do a keynote at the ADB Southeast Asia Development Symposium 2022. And I'd like to start by acknowledging the challenging times we live in. The pandemic has changed the way we work, live, learn, and connect with our community. And as we look back, there's no question that the last two years have been a catalyst for real structural change across every industry, company, and country. The biggest learning for everyone is that no business is immune to a crisis and no organization is 100% resilient. Fundamentally, we're moving to an era of digital, of cloud, of AI, and of ubiquitous computing. An era that will experience more digitization over the next 10 years than in the last 40 years. And it's more than just digital transformation. We're seeing an urgent and clear move to digital acceleration. And we're grateful that at Microsoft, united with our partner ecosystem, we're able to be digital first responders to the world's first responders, supporting those on the front lines of the pandemic across healthcare, education, public sector, critical manufacturing, grocery and retail. Before the pandemic, could you have imagined that a parliament with all its procedures and security requirements would be debating and passing laws virtually using Microsoft 365 with Teams? That's what happened in the Maldives. In the Philippines, the Supreme Court conducted virtual court and hearings to liberate more than 60,000 people so they could go home to their concerned families and loved ones. And before the lockdowns, no educational institution or school would have dreamt of creating entirely virtual classrooms with virtual lessons and exams. And in South Korea, where education has always been in person, COVID-19 saw more than 3 million students move to virtual classrooms for schooling. We helped the Ministry of Education and Training in Vietnam deploy Microsoft Teams in a record time of 27 hours for more than 200 schools to support 3.3 million teachers and students. And two years later, we've realized that the journey we're on from the initial COVID-19 emergency response phase through business recovery is now focused on reimagining the way we work and live post-pandemic. Today, there's a lot of focus on resilience, the ability to adapt quickly to changing conditions, and it's become the hallmark for success in today's environment. Every industry is facing transformational change. And for many organizations, how they define success yesterday is not how they're defining it today. And what's brought us here today is the need to cultivate a culture of innovation and a growth mindset so we can all ensure organizations stay agile and resilient. According to McKinsey, Southeast Asian policymakers and execs have turned their attention from reopening to reimagining their economies by investing in manufacturing hubs, green infrastructure, digital and talent, reskilling, and high value food industries, which can not only speed up the economic recovery in these countries, but can also lay the foundation for extended growth. Let's also consider green infrastructure and the road to net zero. At some level, every industry is undergoing sustainable digital transformation. From 5G, cloud computing, and the internet of things, and of course data, technology has accelerated and transformed the innovation agenda for companies. And Accenture shares that 94% of top CEOs cite sustainability as important or very important to the future success of their businesses. From digital supply chains that improve business processes and reduce carbon footprint, to IoT sensors, streaming, real-time, telemetry for predictive analytics, there's no shortage of examples how technology can enable ambitious sustainability outcomes. And this is further transformed by startups and digital natives who are using AI and data to create solutions that are disrupting industries. Right here in Southeast Asia alone, 
It's estimated that over one trillion in economic opportunities can be generated through the green economy, contributing approximately six to eight percent more to our region's GDP by 2030. We see businesses and manufacturing unlocking new data-driven insights to cut carbon across their operations and supply chains. Retail tracking the carbon footprint of products from farm to fork, field to fiber to consumer, and everything in between to reduce their emissions and to deliver purpose-driven products to customers. In fact, a recent report by Bain underlines the urgent need for public policy capital investments, tech partnerships, and demand for a net zero future to come together so Southeast Asia can push ahead with achieving a sustainable future. To seize the vast opportunities in this green economy, two trillion in infrastructure investments will be needed over the next decade to enable Southeast Asia's sustainable transition. And accelerating the energy transition Valuing nature and transforming Southeast Asia's agri-food system could address up to 90% of the region's emissions whilst unlocking significant opportunities. We have a responsibility to protect our most finite resource, the planet. And without immediate and drastic action today, adapting to these impacts in the future will be far more costly and difficult. At Microsoft, we're doing our part to accelerate the world's transformation to a net zero future with clean energy startup ecosystems and through our Climate Innovation Fund, committing $1 billion of capital to invest in meaningful and measurable climate solutions. And we've been carbon neutral since 2012, but that's not stopping us from committing to being carbon negative by 2030. And by 2050, we will remove from the environment all the carbon the company has emitted either directly or by electrical consumption since it was founded in 1975. Look, it's our role as leaders working together as a coalition to bring our strengths, our assets and resources to build a region that is more resilient, equitable, greener and sustainable for everyone. This is purpose-driven technology where the mission is to collaborate for the greater common good. And resilience needs an innovation mindset. Let's not forget that at the foundation of every example of change and development, well, it's people. For our countries to remain at the forefront of global transformation, it takes disruptors, visionaries, and futurists. And as we see economies reopen and recover, the types of jobs required post COVID-19 have also evolved very quickly. And perhaps the biggest contribution that everyone can make for long-term societal improvement is developing skills and talent. Because it's people who drive digital and transformation and skilling will be the currency for the post-pandemic world. And it's our responsibility as leaders to make it happen by ensuring access to education, training and technology. Now, this is especially important considering that 65% of primary school children today will ultimately perform jobs that haven't even been invented yet. That's why Microsoft launched multiple digital skilling initiatives, from working with customers like Grab and partners to bridge the digital divide for drivers and their families, to committing to skill 1 million people in Malaysia and 24 million Indonesians, as part of our Bersama Malaysia and Berdaya Khan Indonesia investments in country. From being inclusive with Code Without Barriers and the Microsoft APAC Enabler Program, both first for the company, where we and many of our customers and partners are closing the gender gap in cloud, AI and digital technologies and improving the employability of people with disabilities. Digital technology can play a critical role in bridging barriers to communication interaction and information, and in closing the disability divide. The pandemic is far from over. The virus evolves, but human ingenuity, leadership and kindness evolve too to meet it. Our goal at Microsoft is to help nations build strong, inclusive digital economies 
where everyone can experience the benefits of technology and participate in the creation of the new digital economy. And for countries in Asia Pacific to have a truly inclusive national digital agenda, industries need to drive that change. It's our responsibility as leaders of this community to shape what comes next, to show what's possible when our digital worlds reflect the diversity of the society we live in. And these inequalities were brought into sharp focus during the pandemic. At Microsoft, we believe that economic growth we help drive must reach every person, every community and every country. We've seen that when communities, governments and industry leaders come together and are empowered by technology, we can do more than just bounce back. We can enable a digitally inclusive and sustainable future for everyone. Thank you.